Remember when you were a little kid and you heard the phrase summer vacation? It was a sense of relief and freedom. Summer is the one time out of the whole year that you are completely free. There are no projects or tests or any homework to study for or to do. Summer vacation is not just a time off for children, but also a time to expand on what they've learned over the year. They get to apply the, um, their ideas to different situations, not just the hypothetical ones that the teacher created in the classroom. And they are finding enjoyment through learning through hands-on experience. Teachers also need summer vacation off. It rejuvenates the teachers so that they can teach with excitement and enthusiasm. It also allows teachers to come up with new ways to teach so that the children stay intrigued. Today I'm going to show you why schools need to keep summer vacation. There is an increase in the cost of running a year-round school, and there has not been a significant difference of children's scores between year-round schools and nine-month calendars. First, I will tell you why summer vacation is so important. Students and teachers put a lot of stress on themselves throughout the year, the school year. They need a time to relax, and summer vacation is the time for that relaxation to occur. Without summer vacation, there is not time for children to go out and have fun. And while they have fun and go out over summer, they use up their energy. So by the time that summer vacation is over, they're ready to go back to school. Also, many teens get summer jobs and do summer sports, so it allows them time to expand on their interests. Students are able to apply what they have learned in school and expand on their interests. They can go out and see the places that have been described to them and they can, that they have seen pictures of. They can apply what they have learned through to real-life situations, and for many kids, summer has become a kind of occupational testing ground. For week-long specialty camps have made summer a time for opportunities unavailable during the school year. In the article, Leave Those Kids Alone, the case for long summer vacations by the editors of Academic Search Complete. Teachers are also able to plan ahead for the next year. They can reflect on what they did that was helpful to the students' learning and um, create new plans that will get them involved and plan for field trips and stuff like that. Also, teachers also need breaks. They can't just work constantly throughout the year. They can't be always grading papers and projects. Now that you know why summer vacation is a vital break for both students and teachers, I'm going to tell you about the cost increase in running a year-round school into a nine-month school calendar. Running a year-round school costs the districts a lot of money. The economy is poor right now, so the school districts are already trying to cut back. I don't see any way to tack on additional days without costing the state and taxpayers additional money. Bain said in Kate Beck's article, cost among hurdles for year-round schools. And bottom line, the nine-month school year calendar saves the school money. The districts have to pay faculty year-round. This is an extra three months out of, that the school has to find money to pay teachers. In the nine-month school calendar, the teachers are not paid over the summer. And so according to worldsalaries.org, the U.S. average salary for a teacher is $5,266 per month. That is saving an average of $15,798 per teacher per year with the nine-month school calendar. The school would also have to find a way to cool down the school in the hot summer months. July and August are usually the hottest months, and the schools just aren't equipped with the right air cooling systems to compensate for the heat. The editors of Academic Search Complete point out how much the effect the heat can have in the article, Leave Those Kids Alone, the case for long summer vacations. The Saskatoon Catholic School Board tried an abandoned year-round schooling in 2000 after discovering how hot the classrooms without air conditioning can get in August. Schools would either have to install ceiling fans or put air conditioning units in each room. Both of those cost the school a lot of money, and without these renovations, it just gets unbearable, and the kids cannot concentrate on the work. Also, schools would have to pay for busing the kids year-round instead of just the nine months. Now you see how much more money the school would have to spend in order to be a year-round school. I would like to discuss that there is not a difference in the test score. Paul T. Von Hippel, who is in the Department of Sociology at the Ohio State University, conducted a study looking at the test scores. The math scores, as you can see, do not have a substantial difference and actually exceed the year-round schools at the second year. The 
reading scores also have of the nine months starting below, and they exceed because the children are not burned out and they're still open to new ideas at the end of the school year. And there is not a substantial difference to make a case that year-round schooling is a advantage to test scores. In conclusion, I hope that you see that there are many advantages to keeping schools on a nine-month calendar instead of a year-round schedule. Nine months provides students and teachers with time to relax and revive themselves, keeps the cost of the districts low, and there are not any test score advantages to switching to a year-round schedule. School should be a place where children are excited to come in and learn new things. And a nine-month school calendar helps keep the children intrigued and excited about school. So the next time you come across the issue of year-round schooling or a nine-month calendar, I hope you remember what summer vacation means to you and the benefits of it. Thank you.